I'm Clarence Kelly, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I want to welcome you to FBI headquarters and thank you for your interest in law enforcement. J. Edgar Hoover once said that the quality of law enforcement in a community or in a nation reflects the involvement of its citizens. Your presence here today proves that, like the thousands of others who tour our headquarters, you share in that involvement. The men and the women of the FBI, whether in the headquarters or in field offices throughout the country, join me in the hope that you will find your tour interesting and informative, that it will give you an inside view of some of the challenges we have met in the past, some we must meet today, and what we are doing to meet those of the future. The time is 1924. A young Washington lawyer in the Department of Justice is named director of the scandal-ridden Bureau of Investigation. His name, John Edgar Hoover. That is when the scandal stopped. The new director met the first of many challenges, and won. A few years later, when the name of the organization was changed to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, its reputation, like its seal, stood for fidelity, bravery, and most of all, integrity. It still does. The 1930s were a challenging time for law enforcement. Gang wars spawned during Prohibition continued with bloody shootouts like this reenactment of the Kansas City Massacre. The FBI met the challenge of the gangs head on. These newsreels of 1932 report an American tragedy, the kidnapping and murder of the Lindbergh baby. The Bureau, under Hoover, played a major part in the painstaking investigation that led to the arrest, trial, and execution of the kidnapper. Under the new Lindbergh law, the Bureau was given federal jurisdiction. Using the thorough and scientific investigative methods which became their hallmark, they brought under control this threat to the safety of every American family as they strive to do so today. From that time on, the FBI has continued its efforts for the safe return of kidnapped victims and the apprehension of the kidnappers. Another challenge to law enforcement in the 30s was a new breed of bank robbers and killers who terrorized the Middle West. These reenactments show how some of them met their end. John Dillinger. Babyface Nelson. Machine Gun Kelly, who coined the term G-Man. Pretty Boy Floyd. All killed or captured by FBI agents some of whom died, meeting the outlaw challenge. The end of the 30s saw the rise of Hitler and the threat of war in Europe. The FBI was charged with keeping track of such groups as the German-American Bund and the rapidly growing espionage activities of our potential enemies. With Pearl Harbor and World War II, their mission was enlarged. The challenge became greater. This reenactment shows how war once actually came to our shores in the shape of Nazi saboteurs landed from a submarine on the coast of Long Island. But the FBI was there. These newsreels show how the evidence, so carefully collected, was presented to a military court. Director Hoover and associates testified. The military court found the spies guilty. Some were executed, some sentenced to long prison terms, some eventually deported. As the automobile produced a more mobile criminal in the 30s, the airplane produced a more ruthless one in the 50s. Their method was the cold-blooded destruction of an aircraft in flight so that the killer on the ground could collect insurance or dispose of an enemy. Suspicious crash wreckage was minutely examined by experts from the Civil Aviation Board and FBI. One such examination and its follow-up by the FBI led to the arrest, trial, conviction, and execution of John Gilbert Graham, who in blowing up the airplane was responsible for the death of 44 people, including his own mother, to collect her insurance. The 1960s brought another challenge of the air age, the skyjackers. Whatever their motivations, this was a challenge that had to be met, fast. The FBI joined with the Federal Aviation Administration and the airlines in a concerted effort that has greatly reduced this intolerable hazard to air travel. 
The 1960s also brought the FBI a new challenge. The civil rights struggle to secure for all citizens their constitutional guarantees. Violence and the threats of violence marked the early stages. FBI investigations, impartial and thorough, provided proofs necessary for federal prosecution of civil rights violations, up to and including murder. It seems fitting that we end this history of some challenges met by the FBI during the almost 50 years in which J. Edgar Hoover was its director with presentation of the Freedom Foundation Award at Valley Forge. The challenges continue. Organized crime with its illicit billions trying to hide behind the cloak of respectability. An increase in extremist terrorism with heavily armed urban guerrillas drawn from varied ethnic and economic backgrounds. Police officers being killed by snipers in random ambushes. To meet the challenges of today and prepare for the challenges of tomorrow, your FBI remains in the forefront of both the training and technology for criminal investigation. This headquarters, as you will see on your tour, provides the most modern facilities from which to administer the nationwide FBI field offices. It also houses a better equipped and more spacious FBI laboratory, which includes such advanced forensic techniques as neutron activation analysis. Any law enforcement agency may send evidence for FBI laboratory examination and call upon the FBI examiner to testify. Both of these services are without charge. Other facilities are also being updated. Some you will see on your tour. Others are located elsewhere. Fingerprint files, always an essential tool of criminal investigation, will soon be quickly classified by a computerized scanning system, a great improvement on visual search. The FBI's National Crime Information Center, with hundreds of terminals and law enforcement agencies throughout the country, provides instantaneous identification of stolen cars and other property, as well as wanted criminals. And finally, a university for law enforcement, the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. The magnificent campus houses classrooms and laboratories equipped with the most advanced educational technology. The library provides extensive learning resources in books and audio-video equipment. The academy firing ranges, with their close combat and other specialized training courses, reflect the realities of police work today. The academy trains all new agents and brings experienced, seasoned agents at all levels back for refresher or specialized technical courses. The same facilities are used for the FBI National Academy, open to selected law enforcement officers from every U.S. agency and from many foreign countries. Successful completion of the National Academy course is recognized as a significant forward step in a law enforcement career, and graduates return to duty with a broader academic background and a heightened knowledge of technological advances in their chosen profession. It is only fitting that a recent graduating class presented to the FBI Academy this sculpture of J. Edgar Hoover, who conceived such a training program soon after taking office as FBI director. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this brief background on the FBI and how it has met its responsibilities over the years will add to the enjoyment of your tour. I do not want to leave with you the idea that there will be no more problems in the future or that facilities and technology alone will solve them. As always, people solve problems. People meet challenges. The men and women of your FBI will continue to live up to their entrusted responsibilities in the spirit symbolized by our creed, fidelity, bravery, integrity. Enjoy the tour of your FBI. <laughs>